Right, hello. Okay, so in this next video, we're going to have a look at the Material Editor basics. As I say, uh, I'm going to turn on the level filter, just to make that a little bit clearer, easier to see. Uh, I'm going to open up this level, Material Editor basics. Hit the one key on the keyboard just to jump to the first uh, first sphere, um, or obviously just fly around. That works too. Um, and we're going to do an introduction to the UI. So as I said in the previous video, unfortunately these uh, comment boxes haven't lined up because we're not on the same resolution as they were made, uh, but hopefully we can still see um, what they're sort of referring to. So this is the material editor itself. Um, simple movement, right click uh, to grab the canvas and move it around. It is an infinite canvas. Um, probably never making material that big, uh, but it is worth using that space to sort of lay things out and you'll see that in the various examples of materials uh, we can be making. Um, so here, the, uh, the the pin or the output node that we get um, by default, uh, this is all the, the where the information gets plugged into our material. Um, and we'll go through each of these pins uh, one by one in a, in, a, in a video in a second. Um, up here, we have our preview window. So this is what our material looks like. Uh, it's not perfect. It's a little bit limited compared to our um, to our, our world. If possible, if you've got two monitors, um, try and have a second viewport open on a second window. So I tend to have one over here off onto my uh, left monitor. Um, and that just allows me to have a full screen uh, window here for my material and also uh, still be able to see my, my material in the scene. Obviously, if you've only got one monitor, it's not possible. Uh, and this does give you a reasonable preview. Uh, when we get onto more complicated things, such as uh, world position offsets, or using the sort of world data, um, that's when you start getting into problems because the world position here is, is very uh, limited uh, in this small sort of sub-scene. Uh, standard movement controls, alt-click to move around, right-click to move in and out, um, all of that kind of stuff. Um, we can move the light around we uh, control click control L and click that allows us to move the lighting um, which can be useful sometimes this also is the the lighting control for the new light system uh, in the main viewport now as well um, and if we want to control the background we can do scene settings so up here window preview scene settings uh, and this is common to anywhere where you get one of these preview windows um, and we can do things like change the lighting um, make it brighter or darker. Uh, we can set an environment cube map. So this is the inbuilt one from the engine. This is actually Epic's old offices at Renton, which I think they still use, I'm not sure. Um, but that's what that location is. And you can plug in your own cube map. So if you're making a game set on Mars, you might want to have a, a sort of Martian red atmosphere cube map in there uh, for your preview materials. Uh, let's just turn that off. Uh, we can turn off the, the floor as well and we can change the background all of these things um, and then save that out if you wish as a certain profile um, and we're just going to leave that as default for now I think um, but that's where the settings are to change that. Uh, get back to details. Uh, the current shape here or preview uh, is a, on a sphere and we have these little options down at the bottom so we can check out our material on a cylinder, uh, a flat plane. The default for the plane is it's facing away from you um, so if you turn on the plane settings and you can't see anything, you just need to rotate the camera around to go to the back of it, or well, to the front of it. Um, but yeah, the default for the facing for that is facing away. Um, and then a cube, all useful. Uh, and then the final one requires us to have a mesh selected. So select a mesh in the content browser. Um, so if I do that, open my content browser, just go to start a content, turn on a static mesh filter. Uh, let's see if I can bring this up slightly. Let's try these arrows. Uh, so with that selected now, if I click the last button, we should get our arrows loaded in. Um, definitely can be useful to see the mesh uh, if you're making a material that's specific to a certain mesh uh, to have that preview there. Those settings are also repeated. If you come down right to the bottom, um, there's a preview mesh setting here, preview arrows. Uh, and so you can just find it from the content browser that way as well. So we could bring in the chair, and there we are. Um, there we go. Um, already used the details panel down here. 
Uh, anytime you select anything in Unreal, the details panel will update. Uh, if you want the sort of default settings, you can just click the background or select the, uh, the actual material output pin. But the default background sort of click works well. Um, and then we have here our parameters list as well. Uh, when we get into making materials using parameters, they'll appear in there. Uh, and so we can kind of name things and edit them here. Uh, I'm just going to close the preview scene settings for now. Give myself a little bit more space. It's just taken a while to think about that. Uh, yeah, I appear to be having this bug with Unreal 5 where closing things takes a while. Um, try to debug it and fix it. If you're having the same one and you do know what it is and can, can help, <laughs> that would be much appreciated. Uh, I've been through a lot. I'm hoping it's something that Epic is just going to fix with 5.1 and, and sort of future versions. Um, but yeah, unfortunately that isn't uh, the case here. So just be a little bit careful closing things. It takes a while. Um, not quite sure why. Um, but moving on, um, we have down at the bottom a couple of um, extra uh, outputs. Uh, they might have been hidden. Um, but we can open them up again. So stats and numerical outputs. So if we turn up the stats. Uh, this is going to give us some information about our shader. So in this case, we're using just two texture samplers. Um, we're not using any textures here. Uh, and so some texture samplers are reserved for lighting. So if we change this to an unlit material, it will change that to zero. So there's two texture samplers that are used for sort of lighting calculations. And we'll cover the different lighting modes later on in, in, a, in a future video. Um, similarly, performance stats. So if I open up the window, uh, it's called platform stats. Um, this gives us information in terms of kind of our shader number. So higher numbers are more expensive. Uh, not every calculation or every instruction is made equal. So it's sort of a rough guide rather than an exact uh, comparison. Um, but it does give us a sort of a baseline uh, of what kind of is what's expensive and what's not. So we can compare uh, different materials. Um, and then finally, search results, if you control F, we can search for things in here. So if I just quickly make, uh, let's say, an add node, and then I search for add, it will find that. And we can double click it to jump to it. So uh, when we're dealing with very complicated materials, this can be really useful to uh, sort of jump around and, and find what's happening. Um, OK, last one. Uh, just here on the right hand side of the screen is what's called the palette. Um, it is dockable, so you can click it and open it and um, get access to this. Uh, and this is a list of every node available in the material editor. Um, we aren't going to go through all of them, there are many, uh, but we're going to cover the main ones um, and then yeah, you'll be able to build up uh, and explore the extra ones on your own. Um, you might notice there are some numbers here. Uh, these are the keyboard shortcuts. So if I wanted to create a constant node, I could click it here or click and drag and I would create a constant. Um, but the keyboard shortcut for that is the number one. So if I press one on the keyboard and then click my mouse, I also get my uh, my node that way. Uh, you can right click, constant, and create them that way. Um, doesn't matter how you create them. Uh, I don't tend to use the palettes. Uh, I use the keyboard shortcuts or the right click tick sort of menu for whatever I'm creating. Um, but it is there uh, and it is useful sometimes to go in and especially to see those uh, shortcuts. So. F material function. Um, okay, uh, I think that's everything in this material. Um, so yeah, and we'll move on to, to the next one in the next video.